Hey guys, in this video about white phosphorose and various reactions with it, you also see a lot of slow-mo footages and we'll find out what will happen if phosphorose ignites on skin. Anyway, make sure you'll watch this video till the end, it will be fascinating. In one of my previous videos, I told you about the way white phosphorose glows, and you should definitely check it out if you haven't seen it yet. If you leave a piece of white phosphorose in the open, it will melt and ignite rather quickly. The ignition of white phosphorose, unlike that of red phosphorose, is really dangerous, since it sputters when it burns, being able to cause additional seeds of fire. Here is some slow-mo footage, so you can have a better look at burning white phosphorose pieces splashing in all directions. Don't take white phosphorose with your bare hands, as the skin temperature is higher than that of the environment, and white phosphorose ignites much faster when it contacts with skin, compared to the ignition in air. Here you can see white phosphorose striking skin areas as it sputters. Quenching white phosphorose with water is quite problematic too. Removing it from your skin might be the problem too, as it sticks well to any surface. The ignition of white phosphorose causes the formation of phosphorus pentoxide. It is very active chemically, and whilst interacting with water, it generates a lot of heat and forms phosphoric acid, which burns the skin right through altogether. For this reaction I used a piece of white phosphorose smaller than 1 gram. You probably know that white phosphorose can ignite under water if it has air or oxygen flow attached to it. This causes white phosphorose to dissolve, forming phosphoric acid. Actually, white phosphorose doesn't ignite under water per se, it does in the area of the gas bubble it interacts with. To completely understand what it means, take a look at this reaction in slow-mo.
here I used tosinated oxygen instead of oxygen, uh, but I don't think this changes anything in the reaction. Red hot magnesium burns underwater in a similar way. The best dissolvent for white phosphorus is carbon disulfide. 100 grams of this reagent can dissolve about a kilo of white phosphorus. The dissolution of white phosphorus in carbon disulfide, followed by filtration and evaporation of the dissolvent in inner atmosphere, gets us pure white phosphorus. White phosphorus tends to turn yellow in the light, and since I used powerful light sources to film this reaction, it came out to be yellow. However, less light during the operation means pure white phosphorus and you can see its drops settle on the test tube walls. White phosphorose reacts with halogens very actively. For instance, liquid chlorine ignites white phosphorose on contact.
Although liquid chlorine violently reacts with a solution of white phosphorus and carbon disulfide, there will be no combustion. However, white phosphorus explodes on contact with bromine. Unlike liquid chlorine, bromine ignites white phosphorus and carbon disulfide with ease. The reaction of iodine with the same solution is relatively calm and results in the formation of red crystals of phosphorous iodide.
the reaction between white phosphorose and iodine monochloride results in explosion with splashes of burning phosphorose. By the way, did you know that I have a video about iodine monochloride? Well, I do and it's worth a watch. But before we move on, I'd like to say a few words about the sponsor of today's video, my dear patrons. Thanks to these guys, we all can see the closed chemical reactions in slow-mo, as well as reactions with rare and exotic chemicals. So if you enjoy what I do and would like to help me to buy chemical reagents, glassware, special equipments, I'll be glad to see you as a member of my Patreon. And now let's enjoy the rest of the video. Manganese heptoxide instantly ignites white phosphorose on contact. If we drop some of white phosphorose in carbon disulfide solution on potassium chlorate, Carbon disulfide will evaporate and there will be an explosion so violent it will be hard to capture it even on a high-speed camera. Dropping this solution on potassium superoxide causes an immediate explosion. Being heated, white phosphorose can dissolve in concentrated nitric acid, forming nitrogen dioxide. Let's dissolve some selenium dioxide in water to get selenium acid. Heated white phosphorose reacts with selenium acid forming red selenium. White phosphorose can be decontaminated by a silver nitrate solution or a copper sulfate solution. The reaction with a silver nitrate solution causes the formation of silver on the surface of white phosphorose. It prevents white phosphorose from being oxidized by air. Thank you. 
and the same reaction occurs with a copper sulfate solution, only this time there obviously will be copper on the surface of white phosphorose instead of silver. Also, there will be grey-black crystals of copper phosphide forming during this reaction. Solutions like this are used to quench burning white phosphorose. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you really enjoyed the slow-mo reactions in this video. Subscribe to the channel to see even more cool chemistry. See you in the next video.